in the sense of the 400 sake, the common understanding of what sake was for a long time was that it was a beverage that you served hot and you shot it down right. and you dropped it in your beer. Right. Um, part of the reality of why that existed was because 15 years ago or 20 years ago, the sake that was being sent to America really wasn't very good. Um, I've gotten that, admit, I've had brewers that actually admit that. <laughs> like in a situation where we were drinking and talking, they said, yeah, it's not really good stuff. That's why you needed to heat it up. Because you heat up a sake, it's kind of like mm-hmm. chilling down a Pinot Grigio. Right. So you take a Pinot Grigio out of the freezer and it tastes crisp, clean, and beautiful. You heat up a sake, it tastes a little bit sweeter, and all those impurities disappear. Right. Um, but premium sake, which is what causes, what makes a sake premium, where you can get the different flavor profiles, is the polishing ratio. Uh, they polish the sake rice down to get to the core. Um, sake, unlike wine, doesn't have sugar or water within the grain itself. So you need to introduce those things to make sake happen. Um, when you polish down the rice kernel into the, the center core, you're getting to pure starch, which is then results in a pure, cleaner sake flavor. Um, that basic aspect is where, where they get the, the rates. Um, but most of your flavor profiles come from, from the polishing as well as the yeast that they use to uh, ferment. They have a lot of different yeasts that they use, but generally right now there's about 18 to 19 that are commonly used in making sake, but each yeast will have a different flavor profile, mm-hmm. which will result in different aspects. You can get earthy and mushroomy. You can get floral and passion fruit and banana and all sorts of stuff off of sake, honeydew melon. Um, so in those different flavor profiles, you can pick different foods to pair with. Um, the earthy sakes are great with, like, uh, at our Vietnamese restaurant, hoisin sauce has that beautiful earthy richness mm. that you get. You have an earthy sake that picks up those flavors really well. Um, when pairing, and we were talking about earlier how Asian cuisine was always diverse demeanor and Riesling, right. um, I think in general the way we have, as chefs and, and people in the business have learned, we've learned to pair differently than we used to. The, all the rules, the old rules that were set, what you heard 20 years ago about chicken and red meat, versus chicken was always white wine and fish was always white wine and red meat was the other. We've learned that that doesn't really play along. So you can do things with sake and wine and pair things in a way that's not traditional or what you would think is the way it should go. Um, Sake for me is savory. Sake with savory food is fantastic because the sake, the rice, is a little bit of natural sweetness in it. Not necessarily sweet like gewürztraminer or like a very sweet Riesling, but has a little, little essence of residual sugar and you can pair really well with those foods. I think pairing is always, you always got to sit outside the box, kind of like Cynthia was saying, outside the box to pair, whether it be a wine, whether it be a sweet wine in the beginning, or a sake here where you wouldn't think sake would work. I mean, I've done lemongrass, lemongrass encrusted steak with sake, Mm -hmm. um, because a red wine would never work, Mm -hmm. because the lemongrass, the flavor of the lemongrass and the ginger would kill it, so you get, sake works better. Um, Spicy foods... The cloudy sakes is a fantastic match with, with spicy foods because it has that sweetness and that coconut. By cl- cloudy sake, you mean? Cloudy sake is nigori. It's called nigori. Um, it's when they don't take the leaves out. They leave the little particles of rice in it. It tends to give you a sweeter sake, but sometimes that's with a curry or some spices. It's the perfect, perfect pairing because the rice particles will give an essence of coconut. Even though there isn't, there's no coconut flavor into the rice, it'll give you a little essence of coconut. So sometimes that'll pick up some of those spices and, and that are used commonly in Asian cuisine. For us as consumers, um, going, into the, going into the wine shop and, and, and looking at, at these many sakes in front of us, can you give us any kind of general tips about how we can know what sake is going to taste like what and what it potentially is going to go with? I realize that's probably a, a huge topic, but well, maybe just a little some... bit hard. Um, but in general, like really simplified, easy rules, um, if it says junmai, uh, it's going to tend to be a little bit richer, a little bit fuller, a little bit earthier. Where in will it say that on the label? It'll be on the label. It'll be when it describes it. It'll say there's the, the main things are junmai, ginjo, daiginjo. Uh-huh. But the Junmai, this is the part that gets confusing. <laughs> Junmai can refer to any level. So it can be a, a, a Junmai is an entry level sake, but then Junmai also means pure rice sake. Uh, so it means that there's no other, there's no brewer's alcohol added, which is a whole other lesson, but we'll do that later. Um, I, I'll be upstairs pouring sake later, so you can ask me those questions when we get up there. Um, but in general, if, if it says Ginjo or Daiginjo, you're going to tend to have more floral, more lighter. The more you polish, the lighter the beverage gets. 
Uh, the, the less polished, the more rich and full it'll be. So if you're looking for a fuller, richer sake, um, Junmai is a, is a good way to go. Uh, they have other things called Genshu, and then there's, there's older styles, Yamahai um, and Kimoto, that if you pick those, those are going to be a, a more fuller on the palate. Um, when it just says Ginjo, and it doesn't say Junmai at all, it says Ginjo, it's going to be much more floral, light, fruitier flavors. That's the basic. It's not, it can't always be like that because it's like a wine that you can't say that every Beaujolais is going to taste the same just because mm. it says Beaujolais. It depends on the winemaker and his specific terroir. And the same thing with sake. Sake depends on what water they use, what yeast they use, um, will fully affect the flavor. But in general, that's a good rule to go by. If it's Junmai, it'll be fuller and richer. If it's just straight Ginjo, it's going to be a little bit more floral and light. Mm. 